What's triggering protests in Nicaragua? President Daniel Ortega under pressure to step down after years in power. But the former revolutionary leader blames others for the months of turmoil. So what's the solution? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I am Hashim Ahalbala. It's a revolution against the man who led the revolution in Nicaragua. 39 years ago, Daniel Ortega and his army of Sandinista rebels were victorious in deposing President Anastasio Somoza. The left-wing rebel fighters called him a dictator, which is exactly what many are calling Ortega now. The three-time president defied almost four months of protests against his rule. At least 300 protesters killed, thousands injured, and condemnations from all over the world from both friends and foes. Many are living in fear as gunmen roam the streets, including in former rebel strongholds. Mariana Chanchez reports from Monimbo. 30-year-old Edgar Antonio Hernandez had disappeared for three days, but on Friday his family found his dead body at the coroner's office in the capital, Managua. His father, Agustin Hernandez, says cuts to his arms show signs of abuse. He was tortured, he was beaten here in the head, in the back, and was shot in the chest and leg. He didn't have weapons or mortars. His family says he wasn't involved in the protests, but he was taken away by security forces. They took him away outside the house, but since there was an attack going on, we couldn't go out. Since security and pro-government forces launched a so-called cleanup operation in Masaya on Tuesday to lift barricades, a caravan of heavily armed and masked gunmen have taken control of Monimbo driving around in vehicles without license plates. Many businesses and homes here are still closed, but the roadblocks have been lifted. There are still some tensions here in the neighborhood of Monimbo as a paramilitary continue to patrol these streets. Food vendor Juana Pupiro says she's out selling stew for the first time in more than two months, but she's still afraid. Because of the situation, we can't talk, we can't say anything, but we are okay because we are back to work. Masaya's police say the cleanup operation was ordered by President Daniel Ortega and his wife, Vice President Rosario Murillo. Ortega says the government confronted protesters to bring back stability after weeks of turmoil. Hemos enfrentado. It has been our duty once again to defend peace for everyone. It's been a painful battle because we've confronted an armed conspiracy. Violent protests in Nicaragua have left nearly 300 people dead. Monimbo was a bastion of rebel resistance since the Sandinista revolution 39 years ago, and also during these months of protests. On Tuesday's confrontations, at least two people were killed, but the crackdown is not yet over. Mariana Sanchez Al Jazeera, Monimbo, Nicaragua. The Sandinista National Liberation Front, or FSLN, rose to power in 1979 by overthrowing President Anastasio Somoza, ending more than 40 years of his family's rule. In 1980, the FSLN revolutionary government led by Daniel Ortega introduced widespread land reforms to benefit formerly landless peasants. Two years later, right-wing rebels called the Contras, who were backed by the United States of America, began attacks and a state of emergency was declared. The Contra war led to the deaths of more than 30,000 people. In 1984, the first free and fair elections were held with a landslide victory for the FSLN. But in 1990, the Sandinistas were defeated. The new president elected was Violeta Chamorro with support from Washington. The United States immediately stopped backing for the Contras. Fast forward to 2014 when changes to Nicaragua's constitution came into effect, allowing President Ortega to run for a third consecutive term. 
He won the election in 2016 and appointed his wife, Rosario Murillo, as his vice president. Let's introduce our panel. In Washington, D.C., Vanessa Neumann, the founder and CEO of Asymmetrica, a consultancy that specializes in Latin America. In Manchester, in the UK, Colin Harding, director of the firm Latin Form, and via Skype from Managua, Alan Blandon, a student demonstrator in Nicaragua. Welcome to you all. Vanessa, are we talking here about an outcry against a dictator or is it something else? No, thank you for having me on. Yes, no, it absolutely is an outcry against a dictator. I'm, I'm originally from Venezuela and I have been on your show several times to discuss those dynamics. What we're seeing here is very similar. You're seeing that uh, there was a group that sort of couched itself in this left-wing revolutionary uh, you know, rhetoric that had at one point some reason for being, right? The, the, the agrarian reform, inequality, corruption, dictatorship, et cetera. Well, in Venezuela, we didn't have a dictatorship when, the, when, these, uh, when Chavez came in. But what has happened is that these, these guys, uh, the people have realized that what were these left-wingers have now, you know, taken control of all the powers of state, taken control of a lot of means mm -hmm. of, uh, of production, control of the media, and they, they want the repression to end. This is what happens. When people stay in power too long, they become authoritarian and repressive. And they're under strain right now. So uh, that's exactly what this is. This is mm -hmm. a real outcry for democracy. They want their rights back. Mr. Colin Ortega says that this is a satanic sect backed by the United States of America to undermine his government. Well, yes, that, that's the government's rhetoric. Um, uh, Ortega has never abandoned his, his left-wing anti-imperialist rhetoric, but of course, once he, once he was back in power after 2006, he, he implemented much more pragmatic policies. He actually developed quite a successful economic model in conjunction with the, the private sector, who were uh, representatives of business, were included on advisory panels and contracts, government contracts were handed out to the private sector. And this worked rather well. The economy was growing at about 4% a year or more for several years until very recently. And I think the reference to Venezuela earlier is, is quite interesting because they're, they're playing by the Venezuela playbook now. Mm -hmm. uh, Venezuela um, bankrolled the, 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 the um, Ortega government in recent years, about $600 million a year worth of, of, of oil on very easy terms and credits were, were, were flowing from Caracas to uh, Managua. And this enabled this, this model to, uh, to keep functioning. Uh, it's when it started drying up, and, and one of the things they had to do was increase uh, contributions to pensions by both uh, uh, the, the workers and by mm -hmm. employers that uh, the, the protest broke out. Alan, you, you are a demonstrator. Tell us about how it feels being a protester against Daniel Ortega in the capital, Managua. What's the atmosphere right now? Yeah, it's been three months already, so uh, people uh, are a little tired. We never expect to be like uh, protesting for so many times, and uh, we we have seen uh, horrible things happening. And especially for our generation, it's something really, really new because we never faced something like like this before. So we have. Uh, to be creative and, and still like motivating ourselves, mm -hmm. but with experience. And now um, it's uh, it's hard because the government it's not making anything uh, to to get out of this situation. I they are like on the they are denying everything. And uh, the dialogue uh, isn't is working. It's, OK. Uh, Can I ask you this question, Alan? Do you, do, you, do you fear for your safety? Is it for easy for you to come openly on the streets to denounce the government? No, the streets aren't, aren't uh, as normal. Uh, the, the police are implementing like uh, it's like hunting people, especially people that is on, on protest. They are uh, following them and put them, put them in, into jail. 
So it's it's not really safe uh, staying now and and like being visible to them because they are going to to look after them. Yes. Vanessa, the heavy-handed approach by the government seems to be paying off, at least for the time being. Do you think that Ortega, in a way or another, has won this battle? Well, I think he might. I mean, if, you know, the parallels between the, what's happening in Nicaragua and what happened in Venezuela are tremendous. I mean, it's exact same formula. And, you know, the Vene protests in Venezuela started for real in uh, 2014. So Venezuela has been at this for four years. And the streets, are, you know, there are actually many, about 30 protests a day. But, uh, but they have, there is no end in sight to liberation, you know, to the dictatorship in Venezuela. So if that lasted four years, and this is more brutal, in mm -hmm. other words, this is sort of more people dead in a shorter period of time, a more effective government repression mm -hmm. and more brutal government repression, then we can see this lasting for a very long time as well. Mm -hmm. Either that or it sort of devolves into a civil war, which, of course, Nicaragua has a history of. Mm -hmm. But the people are, by and large, not armed. And the use of the paramilitary forces and the censorship and, and, the, and, and the paramilitary forces on motorcycles are particularly frightening, and again, we had that too, is... Uh, you know, means that this can go on for a long time and it gives the government some form of, like, plausible mm -hmm. deniability, uh, you know, down, down the line. Uh, but so, uh, you know, I, unfortunately, I think that the, the people, the student protesters, have a very long battle ahead of them. Mm -hmm. I don't see Ortega letting go anytime soon. And, I, you know, for the last three years at least that we know of, the Russians have been training and arming the military and the paramilitary forces in Nicaragua. And so they and they have uh, backing by Cuban intelligence as well. So this is not, you know, they're, they're no amateurs. Here. OK, Mr. Colin, but at the same time, we've seen thousands of uh, pro Ortega supporters on the streets saying that their revolution is now being hijacked by the West. Well, um uh, this reflects uh, the changes that took place in, in, in recent years. Uh, the, the money, particularly flowing in from uh, Venezuela, enabled the government to massively expand the public sector, the, 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 um, the state bureaucracy. There's a, a very large number of people in Nicaragua are dependent on, on the state for employment. And the pro-government demonstrations uh, are very largely... Um, composed of people who've been ordered by their superiors to, to attend. Mm -hmm. uh, and they, they know which side their bread is buttered on. They don't want to lose their jobs. They don't want to lose their livelihood. Uh, and um, the, the, the Sandinista youth organization, particularly, which are very young people who don't remember the Sandinista revolution, but they, uh, they, they've been brought up under the, 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 this regime. Uh, they, they form mm -hmm. a large part of the, uh, the, the, uh, the shock troops of the, uh, the paramilitary shock troops of the regime. Alan, uh, there is no indication to suggest that there might be any political dialogue with Ortega in the near future. So what is the next step for you? for the protesters? What are you planning to do in the future? Well, we, we believe that the, the future to get out of this situation is the, the dialogue. Uh, but there are like four aspects that a, a student are asking for a government that it's uh, the most important is like a stop with the violence. So it's implied to stop sending the police to the, mm -hmm. all the cities of addressing people and and for the beginning is that but if they continue like with the same uh, strategies mm -hmm. and um, cooperation with the with the citizens uh, the dialogue is not going to start so mm -hmm. everybody is uh, making a habit uh, on, on the dialogue but we don't see like the government is really interesting on on using the dialogue as a exit for this situation. So, uh, a student are going to uh, stay on, on the street. Mm -hmm. um, they are now like trying to protect themselves because police is uh, following them everywhere. But in, I think in the next week or something like that, people is going to be Thank on you. the street because it's not only a student, but uh, many, many uh, part of the 
and society here in Nicaragua Thanks. is against the government. Uh, Alan Blandon from Managua, thank you very much indeed for your time. I appreciate that. Thank you. Vanessa, is it now boiling down to what should be next for Daniel Ortega? Is the opposition adamant Ortega must go now? Yes, yes. I think that, that, that he, he must go. I mean, it's so beyond any point of, uh, of uh, unfortunately, I think, of dialogue. And I, I know I keep comparing it. It's because the, re the, the parallels are so striking. You know, we've had uh, intermittent dialogue and, and the parallels are striking because it's the same people behind it. It's the same relationships that, you know, dialogue in Venezuela hasn't worked and it's just not going to not going to happen, Part, uh, partly because you have all of these proxy interests of Russia, of Cuba, um, that are that are propping it up. So they really need to the, for Ortega to sort of stay stay in power, and that's even more important. Really, that in some ways it's a it's a stronger, older relationship for them there than it is in Venezuela. So I don't see how dialogue is going to work. Daniel Ortega does need to go. I think that once you start murdering your own people. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, because they want uh, free and fair elections uh, using paramilitary forces. And he's been asking, by the way, another parallel is that they've been asking for and got and are getting, are going to get forces from Venezuela to help keep Daniel Ortega in power. Mm -hmm. So if you're supposed to be a, a liberator who's against foreign intervention, but apparently some foreign intervention is OK as long as it's backed uh, okay. by the same people. So they're going to fight that turf war as well. So there's no, there's no... There's no end in sight. He mm -hmm. needs to go. There's no, there's no t opportunity, I think, for oh, a, I a dialogue resolution here. Mr. Cullen, you've been talking previously about the financial aid provided by the Venezuelan government to Ortega. Chavez, like Ortega, like Fidel Castro, were all promoting or trying to advance the Bolivarian uh, form of socialism. For you, the unrest in, in Latin America, is, is it a sign that Bolivarian socialism doesn't work anymore? Uh, well, I mean, it works as long as there's plenty of money. I mean, the, the, uh, the thing about Chavez, of course, he had a very abundant oil resources, which he was able to splash around uh, at the same time, undermining the basis of the economy. So when the oil menu started uh, running out, which, I mean, the, the, there's no productive capacity in the economy, and uh, the state controls that had been introduced meant there were no incentives for anybody who still had a business to try and produce. Uh, th this, of course, means that the, this kind of model has a very limited lifespan. Uh, and it, it was precisely because the Venezuelan model started running out mm -hmm. of steam with the collapse in the oil price that the aid to uh, Nicaragua started dwindling. And this called the whole uh, Nicaraguan model into, in, into, um, into question as well. But, of course, uh, Nicaragua has learned, Ortega has learned from Maduro, from, from, from Venezuela, that if you're prepared to kill as many people as it takes, you, you can dig in and you can defy both domestic mm. pressures and also foreign pressures to, to, to give way. Uh, uh, Ortega has said that he's interested in dialogue, um, but, in fact, he, he, the, the, the bishops who are supposed to be acting as mediators in the national dialogue, he's accused them of being coomongers themselves. I mean, mm -hmm. So the idea of uh, having people mediating talks when the, the president, one side, regards them as, as trying to overthrow him, is, 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 is obviously farcical. It's not going to happen. Vanessa, do you think that the Roman Catholic Church has the potential to salvage a political settlement? No. I mean, only because I don't think that a political settlement is really going to work here, unfortunately. I mean, I'm, uh, you'll forgive my, my ongoing skepticism. Uh, I do think that, in theory, uh, with a slightly different set of circumstances, they could. They are, uh, they are credible. They have moral authority. This is Central America. The church is very strong, which is partly why you see Ortega saying that uh, that that the ones trying to overthrow him are sort of some diabolical force, right? It's because religion still resonates so strongly. Not only that, the church in Central America, even more so than in than in South um, than in Venezuela, for instance, is a huge provider of health care, education, and everything else. So it's very deeply rooted in the grassroots of you know the poor and rural mm -hmm. areas. Um, and it also commands, you know, the loyalty even of the highly educated, you know, professional classes. Who, no see. matter what, you go to church, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think they could. 
uh, but uh, they could bring sort of the business class and the poor class together. But you remain and, skeptical and about an outcome and, and from this. People, but mm -hmm. it's just not going to happen. Yeah, Mr. Colin, right. uh, we've, we've, we've heard some very strong words from the United States uh, Secretary of State uh, Pompeo. What can the Americans do? do? Do they still have some leverage given their past involvement in Nicaragua? Well, uh, of course, it's uh, one of the, the arguments of the government, of, of the Ortega government, that they're fighting against imperialism. This is a plot involving in international organized crime in league with coolmongers at home and also with uh, terrorists and uh, the imperialists. Um, so this does have a certain traction with some sections of the population. Uh, the Americans can do what they've done uh, to Venezuela. They, they can introduce sanctions on named individuals, stopping them from traveling, uh, freezing their bank accounts, and, and generally ramping up that kind of pressure. To go beyond that is very problematic. Uh, President Trump has talked about it, uh, considering a military intervention, say, in Venezuela. He, I don't think even he would consider a military intervention mm -hmm. in, uh, in Nicaragua. And, of course, it's not going to happen in Venezuela either because it would be very strongly opposed everywhere else in, in, in the continent. Um, but they can try uh, widening the scope of the, of the um, individual sanctions. Mm -hmm. And, of course, all kinds of international organizations can come out with resolutions deploring what's going but on, it, calling on mm -hmm. the government to enter a dialogue, call off the paramilitaries and so on. But uh, this has very limited effect okay. on somebody who is determined to hang on to power. Vanessa, but at the same time, we've seen some Sandinistas, former allies of uh, uh, Ortega, denouncing or at least distancing themselves from the clampdown on the protesters. Is this something that could convince ultimately Ortega to say... I'm off. Well, I, I hope so, uh, I, you, but I still remain skeptical because we've also seen that elsewhere. We've seen that in Venezuela. I mean, you, you do have some true believers, right? The Sandinista movement had a reason for being. There were people who believed that, you know, that you, you needed a greater reform. So they, they came into existence and you had, uh, based in a, in a certain set of circumstances, and they, you have true believers in the rights of the poor, equality, and all of that. So what you're seeing is the fracture of, of the true believers versus the ones who have just sort of become a little a cabal or a mm -hmm. little cartel of power and money. And they're rebelling. They, they view it as a betrayal of their movement. Now, I, I would be curious to see whether the, the people who are speaking out against them are perhaps mm -hmm. not, as, not as deeply involved okay. in the pot of government money. That's a possibility. But... Uh, yeah, we'll see. Mr. Colin, isn't it interesting that in more than eight years, Nicaragua was run by two political dynasties, the Somoza and then the Ortega, with Ortega grooming his wife to take over. What is the problem here with the country? Is it more about the political elite or is it that the politics, the, know, the way we know it in the Western world, does not really function properly in a place like Nicaragua? Well, the institutions are not uh, as well established. Uh, and of course, it, the country does have a, um, a history, a recent history of instability. Um, and of course, th these things take time to, to, to overcome. Uh, yes, one dynasty followed by another one. And, and one of the features of the Ortega government is that uh, one thing that's uh, exasperated the private sector is that uh, increasingly, um, Sandinista militants and, and relatives and so on have been cornering what bits of the economy uh, are, are uh, still functioning well, even while the, 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 the general rate of growth has been slowing down. Um, these things need time to, for, for political institutions to, to begin functioning, but I, I think what we, we have in, 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 uh, in a number of uh, Latin American countries, but particularly in, in Nicaragua, is mm -hmm. a determination by the government to, to make sure this, this doesn't happen, that, that there's, there's no way forward uh, under the present uh, circumstances. And then finally, the last question would be whether Ortega is going to heed international calls and step aside or stick to power. Vanessa Neumann, Colin Harding, thank you very much indeed for your presence today. Looking forward to seeing you in the near future. And thank you too for watching. You can see the program again anytime by visiting our website, aljazeera.com. For further discussion, go to our Facebook page, that's facebook.com forward slash AJ. Inside Story, you can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. From me, Hashem Ahlbar and the whole team here. Bye for now.